how challenge might be to deploy a wireless network by using Fortinet devices. On the previous videos, we saw how to deploy a wireless network by using Cisco devices. And we used an access point. We used the virtual wireless LAN controller to manage the AP. And we were able to demonstrate that wireless clients, users were able to have network access and also by using uh, pre-shared key authentication. Okay. Now, I decided to shift things a little bit and in this video we'll be using Fortinet devices. We also need an access point and I have here an access point that's 40AP431F. So we have this AP and we also need the controller. Now on Fortinet that's interesting. Uh, instead of using a different device to manage the AP we're going to use actually the FortiGate. Now, if you're familiar with Fortinet solutions, you probably know that FortiGate is the firewall. So the firewall is responsible for filtering the traffic that enters or leaves the network. But we can also enable a feature that will allow the FortiGate to act as a wireless LAN controller or as a controller for short to manage this AP. This way you don't need another device to manage the APs. So let's take a look at topology for this lab. This lab topology is going to be very simple. So we have our firewall device, our Forti gate, okay? And I'll be using two interfaces on this firewall. So this is my firewall and this is a switch. So here I have my WAN port, so that's WAN 1 you can see here and I have another port so that's port 4 okay and in this port I have the IP on the subnet 192.168.20 slash 24 and the fourth gate is the IP dot 1 and on the side I will connect my AP Okay, my 40 AP and AP will be assigned an IP dynamically. So which means that we need the HCP on this subnet. Okay. And I'm going to use the range from 100 to 199. Okay. Then the AP, okay. It will be used by the wireless users. So I'm going to draw here a laptop. And it's going to create also another network here. So it's going to be 192.168.3.0. And the AP will be, let's uh, name it as dot one, for instance. And the DHCP users or the wireless users, they will be assigned an IP address on the range 192.168.3.0. Uh, let's say from 100 to 99 as well. Okay. And we're going to use the authentication. Uh, so the Wi-Fi authentication is going to be uh, double P A two enterprise. Now, why am I going to use enterprise? Because on the previous videos, uh, we saw how to deploy uh, the security uh, being a pre-shared key. And I want you to learn as well how to deploy using the enterprise because that's actually the mode often used for companies. So in enterprise environments, they might use uh, the pre-shared key and also the enterprise mode. Okay. So with that being said, this is our topology is quite simple. So we have wireless users they will be assigned an ip address on subnet 192.168.3 and we have our lan or wired network will be 192.168.20 and then they will be able to access the internet but our main goal is to make sure that we have this scenario deployed okay so first thing first we'll start by configuring the 40 gate okay so we'll go at the interface level so on port 4 
and here we want to enable secured fabric connection so this will allow the ap to establish the camp web tunnel with the 40 gates or the controller and we also want to enable the dhcp server now i'm going to change the range here to be from 100 to 199 and the default gateway going to leave as default dns server i'm going to set uh, the interface ip of the firewall and optionally we can uh, enable here the wireless controllers to be same as interface ip so it's going to be the 40 gate ip address now let's see do i have everything in place yes i do also want to enable device detection that might be useful and we're going to save this change so we enable security fabric and enable the dhcp service on port 4 interface okay so now we can prepare the ap to be managed by the 40 gate okay so i'm going to reset the ap to its factory defaults so this ap it has a reset button so i'm just going to reset this and i'm going to press and hold for 10 seconds you can see it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to release. You can see that it says that it's going to reset to factory default. So this might take uh one or two minutes or so. Shouldn't take long. Okay, the AP is back. So if I try to log in as admin, it's going to ask to change the password. I'm going to change the password. okay so it was changed but now we want to make sure that the 40 gate detected or discover this ap so let's go back to 40 gate and we have option here wi-fi and switch controller we go to manage 40 ap's and we can see that it discovered the ap and now is waiting for authorization so we're going to click and authorize this ap to be managed by this 40 gate now this process is going to take some time probably around five minutes so they will be exchanging uh the name of the parameters and once it completes we're going to continue okay the ap is back online and we can see the status now says it's online and all the ssids are enabled and there are a couple of things that i want to highlight here so whenever we discover a new ap uh, 40 gate will automatically assign a default 40 ap profile so if we go here to 40 ap profiles now this was created because 40 gate just discovered this new ap and we can create a new profile and we can change the settings uh, such as uh, which radios we want to uh, leave enabled for instance this ap model supports 2.4 and five uh, gig uh, modes and we can also select which channels we want to enable for one of these bands okay so this is all customized and in case we don't want to use the ones uh created in the profile we can also override directly on the access point mode so uh let's go to fourth ap profile and let's enable uh for instance uh the channels 1 6 and 11 uh only for 2.4 and the ones for 5 we're going to leave it as disabled okay so we want to press okay so this profile was saved now if we want the wireless users to connect to this ap we have to create the ssid so for that we go to ssids and here we can create a new one and the parameters are very simple so we're going to provide a name we're going to set the traffic mode to tunnel uh recall when i said that the wireless users they will be on the subnet 192.168.3.0 so that's where we're going to configure this but i want to show you something first here in security mode uh by default is selected wpa2 personal and we would have to create the pre-share key uh, but i say that we're going to use the enterprise mode so we're going to change this to uh enterprise mode and here we have to specify okay 
how are we going to get the user's uh, credentials or the user's information? We can either use uh, the FortiGate database locally, or we can uh, point to a Regis server. So just to make things easier, we're going to use the FortiGate database uh, for these users. So we have to create first this database, we have to create the user assigned to this database, and then reference that database or the user groups into this field. So we're going to cancel this for now, and we go to user authentication, user groups, and here we're going to create a user group. So we'll create a new one, uh, let's name these as uh, Wi-Fi users and we're going to click OK and now we're going to create one user so user definition uh, let's create a user with the name Carvalho okay and we're going to type Carvalho password and Carvalho I'm not going to use 2FA uh, user account status is enabled and I want to assign Carvalho to that user group Wi-Fi user. So I'm going to enable user group and click on plus and select the Wi-Fi users group. Okay, so we can submit this and we have a new user Carvalho. Okay, this is in uh, FortiGate local database is part of this Wi-Fi user group. OK, so now let's reference this user group into the SSID configuration. So going back to Wi-Fi and switch controller, SSIDs. Now we're going to create a new one. OK, so the name will be um, 40 SSID. And we're going to leave the traffic mode to tunnel. And the IP is going to be so 192.168.3.1 slash 24. Four, and we want to enable the DHCP server so that the wireless uh, clients are able to be assigned an IP address. I'm going to use this range from 100 to 199 and the default gateway. I'm just going to leave everything as default. Now I want to change the SSID. So that's going to be Wi-Fi employee. And we want to broadcast this SSID. And now we can change the security mode to enterprise. And now we're going to grab the user group we just created. So what else do we have to enable here? I believe everything is okay. So, okay. So now the wireless user, they should be able to uh, see this SSID. So I'm going to use another computer just to connect to these networks. So if I go to my wireless card, uh, it's going to be uh, advertised in a minute. So we can see Wi-Fi employee. So let's try to connect to this network, connect. So the username that should be Carvalho and the password. Okay, and it's going to throw this message, but we can connect. Okay, and this should take a minute or so. OK, the connection was successfully authenticated and we can see that it says that it's connected, but it doesn't have Internet access because we have to create the policies to allow that. But uh, we're just going to monitor uh, whether we have any client connected on this network so we can see it was assigned IP address 192.168.3100. Uh, it's connected on this AP that the SSID is using. The user that is connected on this SSID uh, also some information about the computer, uh, the channel, and we can see how strong is the signal. Uh, so we can monitor a lot of details there. And we can also get some details as to uh, is there any problem on the AP. So if we go to logs, Okay, we can see the process uh, from the clients connecting to the AP or the AP uh, exchanging information with the FortiGate. Okay, and lastly, in case you want to allow internet access, so this is related to policies. I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm not going to do it because I, I already uh, created a playlist where you can learn all the foundation uh, around FortiGate. Uh, there is a playlist I'm going to pass somewhere on the screen 
and you'll be able to do it yourself. So essentially what you have to do is to add the network 192.168.3.0 to your policy and it should be able to access the internet. So if you want to dive deeper into FortiGate configuration, save the playlist. And if you got value from this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'll see you in the next time.